hi, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm looking forward to this talk, although I'm a little nervous. I don't have many graphs and um, numbers to present here. I'm not an economics person, so um, this might be a little change of pace for everyone. So this talk is certainly about building a case for fish, you know, building a case in the community for fisheries and aquaculture, but it's more than that. It's a talk about sustainability in action in, in a real company with all the challenges and all the, all the stops and all the good stuff that that, that that is involved. So I wanna give you a little window into our company and at the end of my talk, I think you'll have a whole new appreciation about how we're building a social license for salmon aquaculture in the community. And um, it's not an academic exercise. It's a real everyday example of our company working towards sustainability for good economic, good environmental, and really good social outcomes. Now I'm gonna get the right button. <laughs> so I'll just give you a little brief overview. I'm gonna talk about the steps we've taken and why we've taken those steps. Um, the future, and I, I believe there's two possible futures. It could go either way. Um, and I also want to give you a little brief background. Um, Patrick didn't give much of a brief background on, on me, so I just thought, oh, well, I'll take the opportunity. And um, also a brief description of Tassel as a company for those of you who don't know about salmon aquaculture. That won't take long. And then I also want to talk about, I want to address community because we, we chuck that word out there like it's, you know, like it's one thing, but it's not. It's, it's, it's not. It's so much more and it's so much different. So I just want to get people aware of what community is. So, so my background, and I'm, I'm really proud of my association with the seafood industry. I've got 15 years uh, at working at Sea Experience as a, as a scientific observer, um, two years working with educating the public on a schools-based and young persons-based recreational fishing program, uh, four years as an environmental fisheries extension officer with Ocean Watch Australia, and um, as almost two years now with TASAL working as a community engagement officer. So I just thought, yeah, I've been around a bit and I am really proud of my association with the industry. So quickly, Tassel is the largest salmon grower in Tasmania or in Australia. We produce 23,500 tonnes of salmon annually. 99% of that goes to a domestic Australian market. We're a completely vertically integrated company. So we, we grow our babies um, in the fresh water. We take them out to the marine sites. We, we harvest them. We process them in a whole lot of different ways. We sell them and we market them and transport them out to uh, retailers and, um, you know, to a store near you <laughs> all over the country. <laughs> um, so all of our operations in regard to our fish are based in Tasmania. So all our hatcheries, all our farms, uh, all our processing facilities are based in Tasmania and we employ over 850 roughly people in Tasman. Oh, a few on the mainland as well. Uh, we're a public company as well, governed by an independent board of directors. So I just want to take this opportunity, and I'll be really quick with these next few slides, about have a think about, well, who is the community? I think it's really important to recognise that our communities are made up of different people with different motivations, different un levels of understanding of the seafood industry, different relationships to the seafood industry. So just to kind of, you know, start you thinking about when we talk about community engagement and building social licence, that's a really broad spectrum thing to be undertaking. And then not only, um, yeah, so as a company we do recognise this as we, as we conduct our business and our sustainability initiatives really speak to all of these different communities or stakeholders. And here today, for the sake of this talk, I'm gonna kind of interchange the two really because they're all connected. So we've got our regulators, um, our, our local governments, our national government, our, like it's just, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people that we need to deal with. They're all part of the community. Our stakeholders are part of our community. And today, like I said, I'm including that in my definition of community. Our regulators, our researchers, our employees are all part of the community and they all talk to each other. And they're all really, really well connected. So this can pose challenges and it can also pose opportunities. 
So we have a marketing campaign, you know, we've thrown I don't know how many million dollars at a marketing campaign and that's aimed at consumers. But it's almost like anyone can do a marketing campaign if you've got enough money. Our, 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 our work towards achieving social acceptance or social licence is way more than a marketing campaign. Don't tell our marketing people I said that. <laughs> it's all important. <laughs> Um, our sustainability, uh, sustainability initiatives go well beyond marketing our products. They're a statement of how we want to be seen by the community and the way we want to be seen as a company is as a value contributing member of the community in which we operate. Full stop. And I've done something really corny with these slides, is every time these relationships are dependent, I'll put a little R with a star because it's all about relationships. It's all about building relationships and it's all about building trust. So, why build a case for fisheries in the community? Salmon farming in Tasmania, the whole industry in Tassie, it's worth $400 million to the state. It's a depressed economy, that's awesome. We provide jobs as an industry for over 1,100 people in the state. Put healthy food on the tables of Australians. Why should we provide a case for what we do, isn't that enough? So no, it's not enough. And um, fortunately, I think our board about six or seven years ago, our board of directors recognised that it wasn't gonna be enough to continue business. So why did we take on the journey? So firstly was the board vision. Next was the reputation of the company. We wanted to build an awesome reputation for our company. It's a compliance, it's all about compliance. We have 672 marine farming regulations with which we need to comply. So it's about compliance as well. It's market driven, driven by public opinion, driven by our consumers, driven by our customers. Um, there are environmental NGO campaigns that are in operation, so it's about that as well, about addressing concerns. And it's about fear of conflict. The salmon industry in other, company, in other countries, there's a lot of conflict involved and we didn't want that here in Tassie. Well, there in Tassie. And so it's also about a sensible thing of risk management in the company. So about six years ago, the board um, uh, hired my boss, Linda, who's the head of sustainability. When they hired Linda, there was one person involved in the environment department, if you like, in Tassau. Now we have eight or nine people involved in our department. So Linda made a great business case with the board for expanding her department. Um, they, you know, they recruited her and um, the company has continued and still does, so this was five or six years ago, the company has still continued to invest money in our department, in people, in equipment, in initiatives, and I'll talk about some of those. And um, you see the two things here, I've unfortunately, brought last year's report with this one. But um, uh, uh, these two reports here, they're a real linchpin in our sustainability initiatives and our building community licence. Um, and I'll talk more about those later in the talk. So the first steps in building relationships and trust, you know, when, when Linda came on board and there was now a department of two, um, she worked really hard on improving the relationships we have with our regulators collaborating and improving the relationships with our researchers that we work with. Tassie's a real hotbed of marine research and we're fortunate enough to have a lot of researchers local to us. So doing a lot of work in improving those relationships, building capacity in the company, getting the company ready for what's to come because the, certainly out of the report, it's now more about transparency and less about just going around day to day business and kind of ignoring what's going on out there in the world. Um, and then uh, improving the relationships with the, uh, with, with the public as well. So our sustainability report has been key to that. And also putting on, I'm not the first community engagement officer that Tassau's had, I've been working there about two years and about 18 months before me, another guy was working as well. So it was about investing in a community engagement person to work one-on-one, -on -one people developing trust with all of those different stakeholders and communities that we operate in. <laughs> There's a lot. So, um, and once again, it's all about relationships. So, um, our environment and sustainability department, we work across the social, the social aspects of the business as well as the environmental impact aspects of the business. We have an impact 
by farming salmon and we are responsible for that and we are communicating that. So some of the initiatives that we've undertaken are the vast reduction, vast reduction in the use of antibiotics in growing salmon, reducing our wildlife interactions by investing in a, um, once again it's in people, it's in infrastructure, we've had great successes in reducing our wildlife interactions. Uh, innovation in the company in regard to in situ networking, so reducing the use of um, antifalance on our nets to stop biofouling. Uh, re reduction, we, I think we're almost at world's best practice in the inclusion of wild uh, forage fisheries in our feed now. So we've managed to reduce that down. That's something that environmental NGOs have been asking for, asking for. So we've been quite aggressive in that. Uh, we've been doing a lot of marine debris cleanups in our local areas. We've conducted a life cycle assessment, like a cradle to grave assessment of our product and um, from beginning to end, and that's a way for us to look at our greenhouse gas emissions, our fuel use, our water use, and uh, the input of nutrients into the environment. Um, <laughs> environmental management systems. Um, and then I will, um, we've also just um, certified, uh, the certification of one of our farms has been complete for a best aquaculture practice certification, and we have other farms currently undergoing that certification as well. Uh, we have a, a, a partnership with WWF, and I'm not sure if Michael's going to talk about that, but, you know, it's been a great joy to our company to be able to work with WWF. And, um, but also that's been a journey in itself, you know, with over 800 employees, not everybody has the same opinion of WWF as I do. So it's about building a case for what we're doing within the company and moving forward. Um, so the social work that I do, all of the, yeah. So the social, maybe I'll just go back to my thinking aloud, sorry. Um, the social stuff that I'm involved in, um, so one, it's stakeholder networking, participating in environmental forums, managing complaints, and then powerfully dealing with those complaints, not just being compliant, say, to a noise level or, a, you know, any kind of level. You know, our company's working around going beyond compliance all the time. So working one-on-one, -on -one, with neighbours to some of our operations that may have an issue with us. Um, uh, we're involved in a social return on investment project, which has shown that there are in Tassie, there's some loud voices out there who don't like salmon aquaculture, but equally so, there's a lot of really quiet voices that are supporting us. And that, for us as a company, that makes a real difference. Because sometimes I think we can get in our head that there's, everyone's against us, everyone's <laughs> against us, and, and it makes it hard to operate. But, you know, kind of getting the what's so around uh, the, the social landscape has been really invaluable for me, anyway, personally. Um, so I do a lot of com local community engagement. I do schools work. I'm involved in a seafood industry partnerships and schools program that was started by Ocean Watch. Um, oh, gosh. I have a um, <coughs> sponsorship and donation budget that's a great in for communities and we use that budget. Our priorities there are to uh, contribute financially to the communities in which we operate to things that benefit community. It's not just kind of throwing money out there. So we work with men's sheds down south of Hobart. We work with a good beginnings program around um, improving parenting outcomes for isolated parents, like some really good I mean, I, the list is this long. I can't go through everything, but there's some really good chunky stuff that we do in the community, and I just love it. Um, I've also been involved in a, in a state of our channel project. So a lot of our farms are in a place called the Don Tiesto Channel, south, south of Hobart. And um, so we've gotten involved with a multi-stakeholder, yes, with the competition, and also with oyster growers, local councils, um, Gosh, uh, small environmental groups, we've got it, you know, in touch with all of those guys working for better outcomes for our channel. So I'm really chuffed to be involved in that. Our company is also working on a knowledge bank. You know, we have 800 people working and living in the community and we have a lot of skills and knowledge to share and we want to do that. So we're working on that as well. Um, and obviously communications, yeah. But what I, what I did want to talk about is our sustainability report. So we've just released our second one. Um, they're both available on our website. And the report has been really instrumental in driving the sustainability initiatives within the company. 
um, we, we don't assume that we know what's important to our stakeholders. We've gone out and we've, we've verified that. We have an external advisory committee of people who involves initially WWF Australia, local um, Tasmanian Conservation Trust, local host care groups, the EPA, uh, the, fish, the commercial fishing industry, the recreational fishing industry, to really understand what's important to our stakeholders. And that's what we've put in the report. And our partnership with WWF has come directly out of our first advisory committee meeting. And you know, whilst it was incredibly scary, incredibly scary to go into that first meeting, you know, it was. <laughs> And then the way we came out of that meeting was void, completely void. We had people who we thought would have huge issues with our operations and our company. They weren't at all. They were stuff we had so much common ground that we could work with, and we did. And, you know, some great initiatives have come out of that first meeting, and we continue to engage our external advisory committee in helping us with our report. And their feedback has been invaluable. Five minutes, beauty. Damn it, okay. I was carrying on a bit, wasn't I? So all that has to drive into the, I get excited, has to drive into the economic, you know, there has to be a good business case for all this stuff. So it's relationships as well. So what have we learned? Relationships are important, really important, and they can be fragile. Transparency, the transparency aided by this, it provides trust. Because people, people had an idea about what was going on. It wasn't necessarily related to the truth. But transparency, and it's what you're talking about with the report, it provides trust in our community. We've worked on building capacity within the company. We couldn't have done any of this without the incredible employees that we have working with us. We need to communicate our journey, and yeah, it's a bit corny, sustainability journey, but we really do need to communicate it to our stakeholders, and we need to do that in lots and lots of different ways, online, face-to-face, -face, investing in someone like me, who's a people, you know, it's extension, it's really extension. And, um, and obviously sustainability reporting. Understanding our different communities is crucial to the work that we're doing. And sometimes, even though you know you're right, you've just gotta be the grown-up and not engage in a, in a back and forth kind of Barney, if you like. So it takes time, we're in the process of building trust with our community, and it takes time and it takes continuity of people. Investment in people with the role of my role and the continuity of these people in these kind of engagement jobs is key. Um, so our key elements of success, transparency, investing in relationships, listening to our stakeholders and consulting with, not ignoring, consulting with our stakeholders. Company culture, bringing together a culture of innovation. We have, we have employees in our company that complain. We don't ignore that when that happens. We work with them and we work through the issues, usually, in fact, probably 100% of the time with the best outcome possible. Everybody in the company is on this journey together and we avoid conflict. We avoid arguing and mudslinging. When there's conflict, the only thing that's available is conflict. Um, when there's conflict out there in the media, most people who are reading that, they're not taking in the facts. They just know that there's something wrong. So we, we, we as a company, we avoid getting involved in kind of the, the conflict. Uh, okay, I've probably only got one minute now. Love WWF. <laughs> our relationship, to, with our relationships with our NGOs, transparency and trust are critical, and it takes time to build that trust. Um, our relationships with some NGOs can be fragile and campaign NGOs versus working in partnership. That's what we found great. You know, I, I, I am going to give Ocean Watch a plug. They're people who work in partnership with the seafood industry for best environmental outcomes. Campaigns for us don't work. It just makes us want to, it's conflict. It's conflict. We don't want to be involved in conflict. And there, there's clearly a role that media has to play in this. So why did we go on the journey in the beginning? It was a board vision, company reputation, compliance, market driven, public opinion, NGOs, all those things I said at the beginning. And why we're on this journey now is because we get to contribute to sustainable communities. We're an ethical investment option. 
staff retention. We're the employer of choice award this year. And it's, a, it's also a moral kind of choice by our company. So I said at the beginning that there are two possible futures highly dependent on social licence. So one possible future is a fractious relationship with communities and environmental NGOs, community division, poorer social, environmental and economic outcomes. Or the other possible future, and this is the one I'm certainly playing for, is that our company is an optimal ethical investment choice, a thriving business operating in a healthy and biodiverse waterway. Casal is a valued contributing member of the communities in which it operates, collaborating powerfully for best environmental, social and economic outcomes. And it was mentioned in some of the talks earlier this morning, the role of women in this. It's no accident that there are a lot of women involved in our company in the social, you know, in the social kind of outcomes. And I was fortunate enough to be the Tasmanian Rural Woman of the Year last year and and even more fortunate to meet all the other state winners and runners up and without a, um, without a shadow of a doubt, every single one of those women, all of their projects and all of their ideas were around benefiting communities. So if we're going to work towards social licence, we need to work with our women, we need to empower our women because they're driven to benefit communities. It's not hard work, it's inspiring work. Any last slides? So maybe, just maybe, we can create a new paradigm. Communities, NGOs, regulators, researchers, and the seafood industry working together for best local, global, environmental, and social outcomes. Isn't she great that you won't get her off Tassel for a while? <laughs> um,